I've been your host, Eric D. L.J. Johnson. I'll see you all next time. Farewell, fantastic day. Johnson. I see retirement's treating you well. L.J. Johnson, huh? Nobody's called me that in about five months. What do you want? I understand you're out of the game. But they want you back. You have to do one more review. It's never just one more review with you people. There's always another review. All I'm asking is for you to give it some thought. Take your time. Get a haircut. Okay, what? everyone and welcome back to another TTV set review. Today we are taking a look at set number 11021 90 years of play. The set contains approximately 1100 pieces, retails for about $50 US and will release rather has released May 1st 2022. No oh my goodness it's finally here and by finally here I mean it was here like a month ago and I'm finally getting around to talking about this. But this is a big deal. I'm very excited. To start things off, this video is not sponsored. We are not sponsored by anyone for this. LEGO did not send this to us. I purchased this. So, as usual though, like with sponsored videos, everything you will hear here will be my personal opinion. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, I'm going to go over all of the models in this set. There are 15 of them. And of course, I'm going to talk a little bit about the sets that they're based off of, or as much as I can, realistically speaking. But if you're here for one particular model review, go ahead and check out the timestamp listed right here. That'll take you right to that one. We'll have like chapters set up, so you can just click on over there. But of course, we'd really appreciate it if you watch through the entire video. So now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So a little bit of background, this set is to celebrate LEGO turning 90 years in 2022. And as such, they made 15 models to commemorate 15 different themes from LEGO's history over those 90 years. So we're going to go ahead and go through all of them. This set does also come with a bunch of additional pieces in like four or five bags. So you have a lot to work with in terms of mocking or making your own models from themes that maybe weren't represented in this set. So let's go ahead and kick things off with the very first. Representing 1935, it is the Lego Duck. This, obviously enough, is the original first Lego toy, or at least one of the first. It is meant to be the Lego Duck, the wooden duck. Now, Lego has made recreations of the wooden duck several times in the past 
and this certainly looks like any of those. It's a good representation. The one thing that's missing is the little string with the knob that I think is featured in the wooden one and was featured in some of the LEGO recreations. That isn't here. Not a big deal. This is still quite an accurate model and it's cool. It's got wheels, it spins and you know, you can roll on the ground and yeah, it's a duck. So if you're really looking for that Lego duck commemoration, it's a good place to start. Coming up next, representing 1961, this is gonna be set number 810-2, Town Plan, Continental European. I couldn't really find a retail price for this set, however, the original contains 760 pieces. Something worth noting is that the box art on the back showing this set is actually referencing set number 200-5, Lego Town Plan Board UK Australian Cardboard Version. This is a placemat and released in 1962. However, the set that they're supposedly referencing did come out in 1961. So you see there's a pretty basic house and a car of some sort, and these are fine. I mean, they, they definitely look like they're from that set. They are two models from many of that set. So they took the two that I believe they figured represented it the best because it's a house in the town, and then it's a car driving around town, and they put it in. I'm sure you can make different models from that set using either the additional pieces or just reworking these, but for what they are, they match what they're supposed to be. The only thing that's really missing, of course, is a placemat so that you can put them in different areas of a town. However, you can supplement that by getting one of the various city sets that are out nowadays. So, it looks good though. It matches what it's supposed to be. Let's move on. Coming in and representing 1966 is set number 113-2, Motorized Train Set. I again could not find a retail price online, but the original set contained 271 pieces. So this is, I say, I'm a, I'm a sucker for trains. I really like trains, and this one looks really cool. It definitely matches the original quite well, and you even have the option to add on more carts because this design is rather straightforward, which is a good thing. Overall, this looks really good. Like the duck, it has wheels so it can drive along. The cart is on a ball joint, but it's a super loose ball joint. So it obviously wiggles around a bunch. I don't know if there is a scale of track that would match this model, but if there is, then that'd be cool to see. If not, no worries. It definitely looks like what it is supposed to represent. And I quite enjoy it. It's small, it's quaint, it does a good job. So let's move on. Next up is a classic from 1978. It is, of course, none other than set number 375-2, Castle, representing the castle theme. I, again, couldn't really find a retail price, which surprised me because it's such an iconic set. I figured that would have been you know, listed somewhere, but the original set contains 767 pieces and contained 14 minifigures. So LEGO's actually done recreations of this before. They've done a small scale one, I think for the 60th anniversary of the LEGO brick. And this certainly looks good. It's a smaller scale than that, but it captures all of the hallmarks. It is a yellow castle on a green plane. It has the red highlights and it's got these really cool, I can't recall the name for these, but basically the tops of the towers. They use crepe pieces that are recolored in yellow. And I think that has a fantastic effect. It really illustrates what it's supposed to illustrate. All in all, this looks really good. Again, it's a small scale. So it's really good for just kind of keeping on a desk. You know, if you really had, if you have a collection of these yellow castles, then you can definitely put this next to them and feel good knowing it's a good representation for not only that theme, but this specific set. So LEGO did a really good job on that one. Let's go forward one year with our next set from 1979. This is gonna be set number 497, Galaxy Explorer, representing classic space. The set retailed for $32, and contains approximately 338 pieces with four minifigures. 
Obviously, the original does. This one contains far fewer pieces and no minifigures. But it is a really good design. This one was also recreated at a smaller scale in the 60 years, or 60 anniversary of the brick. And I, this is much smaller than that one, but I think they do a really good job. I like the, the kind of studs forward design of it from the front and the top. It looks really, really sleek. Honestly, a lot sleeker than the original one does. On the bottom, it has a really cool design. It looks really cohesive using all of the same general colors. The back is a tad blocky, but given its construction, that's a bit hard to avoid, and it really isn't that big of a deal. This looks really good. I, I like the yellow pieces that are used. They're very apt. And yeah, this does, again, a very good job of being the Galaxy Explorer. So, LEGO did a good job on this one. I think some people might be a little disappointed that it is so small, especially when LEGO has made larger versions that might be a little more accurate. Yeah, space fans should be quite content with this representation for classic space. So, good job. Skipping forward a few years to 1981, let's look over the set, Ugh, the representation for the set for Fabuland. The next one is set number 3601, Elton Elephant, representing Fabuland. I couldn't find a retail price, but the set released containing approximately six pieces in one figure. So, anyone that knows me knows I'm not a terribly big fan of anthropomorphic really anything, so I can't say I was terribly jazzed to see this. However, a lot of people hold Fabulan in high regard. It is a notorious theme that lasted for 10 years, is my understanding. And looking at the base model, this is a really good recreation at this scale. It's got the googly eyes, which is really funny. It's got the appropriate color scheme, though I think the legs could have worked being white. I think that's that's in the original set, but they're yellow here. And of course, you got this really cool small scale table and the umbrella. So it's got good parity with the original set. It's fine, and it definitely earned its place here. And I mean, I, it saves us from having representation from Chima. So I'll take it. It's my least favorite model by default from this, but it's not because it's a bad representation. It's just because I was never gonna like that theme. There, there, there was really no winning, but I'm sure Just Too Good is rather happy. I'm gonna go and imagine this in that scene from the Lego Movie 2 where all the Fabuland characters are being used for uh, encouraged labor. Regardless, it's a impressive model and I wanna move on. So we're gonna move on. Moving on to 1989, it's gonna be set number 6285, Black Sea Barracuda, representing classic pirates. At retail, the set released for $110, contains 909 pieces and eight minifigures. This obviously has far fewer pieces, and again, no minifigures, though it does have a minifigure head. It has the little skull. So this is a very good representation. Again, it was made for the 60th anniversary of the brick set and at a much larger scale. And this one looks really good. It's very sleek. It's definitely capturing the pirate ship. One side of it is a lot better than the other though. And that's simply because of how the flag design is. It's oriented on the right side. So if you turn it around, you're not getting the full flag effect on the other side. It is a little blocky, but at this scale, that's to be expected. And the flags are a bit thick. They're not really cloth looking. However, they definitely emulate properly uh, the sail design. So this is a really, really good looking model, though I do think that the skull is probably a bit too large. I think it's a creative idea because it has like a, a Jolly Roger skull flag on the back of the actual proper set. And so I think it's a very creative solution to getting that skull and crossbones Jolly Roger on this model without trying to print a new piece at such a small scale. So it looks a little bit jarring at first, but I think they did a good job getting that representation in there. 
and getting that emulation on the, such a small scale. So good job, good representation for Pirates, such an iconic set for that theme. So definitely a win. Next up, skipping nearly a decade, going over to 1998, we're gonna take a look at set number 5978, Sphinx Secret Surprise, representing adventurers. The set retailed for $50, contained 347 pieces and seven minifigures. This was a surprise. I don't know why, but I did not expect them to include anything for adventurers, but I'm really happy. It wasn't a theme that I was terribly familiar with, but I was familiar enough with it to remember some of the online Flash games on lego.com. And so, of course, Johnny Thunder is an iconic Lego character. I'm at least aware of many of the sets that he's been in. Again, I've played the Flash games, and I've seen the updated minifigure from the collectible minifigure wave. And I, I honestly don't really know if this is a good set to pick. I don't know if this is more iconic than not out of anything else from the Adventurers theme. I, so I recognize it at the very least. I think that this is a really iconic set from that theme. And for what it is, they did a really great job of making that set. You got a tiny scorpion, which is really cool. The Sphinx looks great. It looks really good uh, being based off of the big one on that smaller scale. You actually have one of the few printed pieces, large printed pieces being this pillar with the hieroglyphics. It looks really good. The Some of the markings are the same from the original set. However, the original set doesn't contain this specific does their pattern like layout and it also doesn't contain some of these designs so some of them are specific to this so i think that's kind of cool in the sense that you can now incorporate that in adventures mocks or re-upscales of this so that's kind of neat it's kind of a new adventures piece in a sense and yeah i think this is really good really well done and I'm glad to see it here. This was a pleasant surprise. Also super jazzed to have a new red crystal. The crystals are always just, they just, they hit different. There's something about crystals in the Lego sets. I, just, I can't explain it. They're just, I love them. They're really cool. So this is really good. I'm very happy it's here. Moving into the 2000s, we're going to take a look at set number 5827, Royal Coach, representing the theme Belleville. The set retailed for approximately $27, contains about 83 pieces and three figures. Now obviously in that original footage of me building it, I did incorrectly build it. I was a little excited to get to what's next, but here you can see I have properly built it. This of course does a really good job representing, I think, that set. I don't know very much about the Belleville theme. I know it's a very early predecessor to LEGO Friends. But again, I don't know it very well. So I don't know if this is like the best set to represent that theme or not. I very, very tendentially recognize it, so I believe it might be. And it does a good job. You have this horse here, which again is connected by this loose ball joint, so it can kind of do its own thing. Horse design is, of course, kind of cartoony, but it looks good. The carriage is very wide open. The color scheme is very reminiscent of the original model. And you have this neat little frog just kind of chilling here. I assume that's the prince, but I have no idea because, again, no familiarity with this theme. So overall, though, the wheels do spin also, by the way. And we get another crystal, but this time in blue. Just hits different. I like that. This does a good job representing the theme and doesn't horse around. And yeah, I think it's good. Does what it needs to do. And if there are any Belleville fans that might disagree, let me know. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. It's time. Begin the assembly.
released in 2001, set number 8534, Tahu, representing the Bionicle theme. The original set retailed for $7, contains 33 pieces, and creates one figure. So this is obviously enough the one that I was the most excited about, and this got the most discussion from this set of any of these models. This one was so hyped up, and it just, it fascinates me. People went bonkers for this. Uh, it would be worth mentioning that this is the only set in this set that I've actually reviewed. I do have a review for the original Tahu. It is really old. It was released in 2013. It was my very first review, actually. So I'll go ahead and link it up in the upper right-hand corner, but don't expect high quality. Uh, so this thing, so speaking of uh, as a Bionicle fan, I'm really jazzed that this is here. I'm grateful that LEGO took the time to reference Bionicle in this set. It, it just, it really floors me. There was uh, another reviewer who did a written review of this set, and they were confused as to whether or not this was a good representation. They weren't sure if anyone would be able to recognize Tahu outside of the context of this set. And I, I, there's always context to this set. This set is inherently filled with context. The original box art for every set, uh, with the exception of one, is on the back of the box. You will see what this is supposed to be. This doesn't exist in isolation. And amongst Bionicle fans, Holy smokes, you couldn't have picked a more iconic set of all of them. Bionicle had 291 individual sets, and of all of them, this was the poster boy. Hands down, no contest, isn't even a discussion. And the actual design work of this is awesome. I'm really jazzed that they, they get the fire sword in there, the color scheme looks great, the color distribution looks really great. And on the face, the mask, I was really astounded by the cleverness of this technique. See, the original set has kind of this grill on the front. And in the set, you have this circular piece, and it just barely breaks up this black piece, the black uh, plate behind it, just enough to make the black parts peek out and look like those ridges, those uh, separations in the mask. I thought that was insanely clever. Overall, I think this is a wonderful representation for Bionicle. There are some Bionicle fans I've seen that are upset at the kind of googly-eyed, goofy appearance of this Tahu, and I guess they just forgot that we also have a googly-eyed Fabulan character, a googly-eyed dragon from Ninjago, a googly-eyed horse, and a googly-eyed duck. This set is represented as seriously as every other set here is. It is not taken any more or less seriously, and for that, I appreciate it. It is on even footing with everything here, and it represents the Bionicle theme in a really, really good way, and I'm very happy for that. And what the Bionicle community has done with this, the creativity that we have seen from this all across the internet, getting hundreds of thousands of replies and tweet and retweets and likes and views it's astounding the outcry uh the sorry the outpouring of support and interest and excitement for this has been like n almost nothing else it's been awesome i love it i think this is really well done i think what it's done for the community is really great and i'm really excited that it's here so great job set designer props to you this is awesome oh gosh i love it Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, moving on four more years to 2005, we take a look at set number 7237, Police Station, representing the city theme. This retailed for $69.99, rounding up to $70, contains approximately 586 pieces, and contained five minifigures. So the significance of this, of course, is this is the first, or the original set, was the first LEGO City police station. So it makes sense that this would be chosen not only to represent city, because I think most city sets are at least somewhat tendentially, tendentially related to uh, LEGO police, 
but it's definitely an iconic set for the city theme. There are oftentimes remakes and recreations every few years of the police station. So this one's very involved. It's got a lot of pieces. It also has a printed piece that says police right there. It certainly does a good job of looking like that multi-layered police station from the box art. A lot of glass pieces. You have a jail off to the left-hand side. My favorite part of this is the helicopter, which is its own separate component. The propellers will spin, obviously enough, and it just pops off the landing pad here. You can just put it on. Just... I think that's really cool. It's not a function or feature I would have anticipated, and it adds a level of play to a model on such a small, small scale. And that actually really impresses me. So overall, I think this is a really good representation of this city model, and its inclusion here is no surprise whatsoever. Moving on, skip five years into the future for the set to 2010. Set number 8043, Motorized Excavator, representing the Technic theme. This set retailed for about $200 and contains 1,123 pieces. So this is interesting for a handful of reasons. First of all, I will of course mention that while this is representing Technic, Tahu, at the time of his release, was also technically a Technic set, because Bionicle started off as a sub-theme of Technic before it branched off the next year. But for Technic alone, this I think is a fine representation for the theme. I think it's kind of interesting because I was reading some responses online, it's not the first excavator, it's not even the most well-known excavator, it's not even the first uh, electronic set, uh, but I think it's a pretty standard excavator look. Like, a lot of Technic sets are vehicles nowadays, and a lot of them are either some form of construction vehicle or a really, really impressive race car. And I think this is a perfectly reasonable set that fits this kind of intersection of things. It represents another year, 2010, which I, that was a, a pretty big year for LEGO. And it represents Technic on its own. So I think this is fine. This makes perfect sense to me. It is worth noting, and this is super fascinating, this set contains just 23 pieces less, the original one, than this entire set here does. This set retails for 50, but the original retailed 200. That's crazy. So, looking at it itself, it does have the, the function feature of the excavating arm that can you know, do the digging. It works fine because it actually literally uses Technic pieces, which I thought was very impressive. So, that was really nice. Color scheme matches, for the most part, I think the red is a little unusual, but I'm not going to get too off in the weeds. The treads, of course, are gray, which I think is, is interesting. I don't remember off the top of my head if they're gray in the original or not. They look to be, fair enough. This set does a good job representing what it is supposed to be, though I feel like the top of it looks a little unfinished, especially with the immediate juxtaposition of this plate that's been added here. I just feel like there, there should have been something added there, but I don't know what. So, it's fine, it's definitely not my favorite, but it does do a good job of representing Technic, and the inclusion of actual Technic parts, I think, was really, really nifty. So, I like it. Alright, three years later, let's get into another story theme. This time, from 2013. Set number 70503, The Golden Dragon, representing Ninjago. At retail, it released for about $29.99, rounding up to $30, contained 252 pieces and three minifigures. So this one is interesting for a few reasons. First of all, it's the first set on this list contained in the set that has a five-digit set number, because eventually they did transition to those. My understanding for this being here is that obviously Ninjago is a huge theme. For it not to be represented here would be astounding. I, I, would, I would be baffled. So it being here isn't a surprise. This set, I think, might perplex and surprise some people. I'm not shocked that it's here, because I think there was something 
that LEGO released that talked about this being one of the more popular and high-selling LEGO Ninjago sets at some point in time. This was released during the final planned year for Ninjago originally. 2013, I believe it was, yeah, 2013 was meant to be Ninjago's final year before the announcement came out that it was going to be shuttered and public support came out asking for it not to be. It has since gone on to be one of the longest running story themes LEGO has ever made. It'll either surpass Bionicle very soon or it already has. So looking at this itself though, I'm unfortunately not terribly jazzed by how the set was represented. I don't think it was as well done as the rest of them. It's very blocky and the original dragon is not. It also uses bright green it's not called bright green, I don't think. It's just, it's green as far as I know. This is just, it's green. And while this is my favorite shade of green, it's not the green that was used in the original model. The original model used dark green. Uh, again, the blockiness is really kind of distracting for me. The feet being particularly blocky and the torso as well. Everything else, it, it looks fine. The googly eyes are of course in line with everything else that's here. The wings can move back and forth, which I really like. I think that's impressive. And I actually didn't expect that level of articulation or functionality from this model, but I also didn't look at it too hard. And I feel like if I did before this, I would have realized that this could have been a better looking representation of the original set. So I am very glad that Ninjago is here. I'm curious to know what other Ninjago fans will think about this and its representation here. This wasn't my favorite, so that is unfortunate, but it is the way that it is. Moving on, the box says this set is from 2017, but that's an error. The following set is actually from 2018. Coming in next, it is set number 41340, Friendship House, representing LEGO Friends. The set originally retailed for $69.99, rounding up to $70 contained approximately 722 pieces and three mini dolls. So this set being here is also not a surprise. LEGO Friends as of this year has gone on for a decade. It is one of the decade long themes and it is insanely popular. So it being here makes perfect sense. I don't know enough about LEGO Friends to know if this is a super iconic set. I think that this was the first playhouse that they had, the friendship house that they had for the theme, but I do not know. The color scheme is very in line with what's on the box. It is a little more simplistic than I think what the original set is. It definitely got slimmed down and smoothed out a lot more. And to me, it looks best from the front. If you turn it around, it looks like the top of an ice cream container, like a Neapolitan selection of ice cream, but different flavor flavors than like normal Neapolitan and they're all just like neatly packed together. So it's all smooth and not very intriguing on the back. But on the front, it looks fine. Uh, I think they did a really good job packing all the detail in there. You got most of the hallmarks of the original set and you have this flag on top, which I think is really cool. It looks like a Lego Friends set. Its inclusion makes perfect sense. And I think it's one of the few instances of an original theme being included in with a predecessor theme. Uh, as long as you're not counting like Ninjago and Bionicle. But this is like a direct predecessor current. So I think that's really neat. I'm glad that it's here. It makes perfect sense. So I'm curious to hear from LEGO fans, friends, what you think about its inclusion. And do you think that this was the right set to have? Well, let's move on to the last one. Coming in for the latest year since this set was being developed, 2020. It is set number 41906, Pineapple Holder, representing Lego Dots. The set originally retailed for $19.99, rounding up to $20, and contains 351 pieces. So this is interesting, because this is the latest set in the, the set, and to, at the time of this recording, Dots is still going, it's still going very strong, in fact. Uh, getting a new wave of sets that do some really creative things. I don't have a lot of familiarity with LEGO Dots. It was not a theme that really interested me. It wasn't really for me, which is totally fine. 
but this set felt like a pseudo mini introduction to Lego Dots. Like this is the kind of set that kind of gives you a taste of what it's like to build a Lego Dots set. And I appreciate that because it helped me realize Lego Dots is really, really not for me. It, it has a lot of finagling of the pieces of the tiny dot pieces and getting them just in the right place and just centered the way I want them to be. And it's a lot of finagling that I just not terribly enthused by. Not to say that it's bad. This actual re set representation is very good. They definitely captured the look and appearance and feel of the Lego Dot set. And it uses pieces from Lego Dots, ones that give it its namesake, of course, kind of like the Technic set, which I really enjoy. Definitely not a theme for me, but I appreciate the opportunity to give it a try. I really love the green plant on top, representing, of course, you know, the, the pineapple bit. And I think they did a really good job sizing this down. So I'm glad that it's here. I hope that Dots continues because I think that it is actually a really cool theme. I think they do a lot of cool stuff in terms of like Lego wearable merchandise. But yeah, so they did a good job. I'm happy. And that is everything. Again, the set does come with like five other bags of pieces that you can mock with and do stuff with. I'm not gonna be doing anything with those in this video, but I'd like to follow that up in the future. Overall, gosh, I am, I'm really jazzed about this set. I really do like it. I think that this is a really neat way, not only to get maybe some older fans into the classic theme, but also to give kind of a history lesson to younger fans who might be a little interested in, again, the history of LEGO. I think that the 15 themes that they picked here are all fantastic. I think they did a really good job on deciding which ones. You have iconic hallmarks such as the LEGO Duck, the Castle, Pirates in Space, and of course, Bionicle. You have some more modern themes that have made a huge impact, like Ninjago and Friends. So it's hard for me to really be angry at the selection here. As an older builder, one that's a little more familiar with LEGO in general, I don't know how much excitement you're going to get out of this set in terms of building the models and then just doing something with them afterwards. Like, for older fans, this is really exciting if you're really looking for a particular theme to be represented and you want to add it to your theme collection. For younger fans, you might not be quite as jazzed by this because there isn't a lot of play function with a lot of these models. That said, there is a lot to do building-wise. Even if you don't build the models, you still have over a thousand pieces to just do whatever it is you want. And I think that's a really exciting opportunity. For me, I'm really jazzed about it. I like LEGO in general. I'm interested in its history. I, of course, have a vested interest in Bionicle having representation here, in Ninjago having representation here. I think that it's really exciting. And I like having these sets for the purpose of, of representation, uh, for having these somewhere I can display them. And if somebody asks about them, then I can explain, you know, oh, well, this is from here, this is from here. So overall, can I recommend this set? I can. I definitely think there are many people that would enjoy this. Not only can you mock with it, you have all of this very interesting history on display here. If you're like me, who's a Bionicle fan and was really excited about Tahu, then of course you're going to want it for the Tahu. That's why I really, really was looking forward to it. And as a bonus, I got all of these other figures. And of course, for this video, I had to look up the other sets. So it served as a kind of a launching point into learning more about what else was here. And I think that's kind of a, a neat, unintended bonus in and of itself. I think this is really cool. I think it has a lot of intrinsic value here and I'm excited to hopefully see more. And I wanna see more of these sets in this style. Like I wanna see more people make like different themes or different sets from different themes in the style of classic. Like so many people have been making Bionicle sets in the style of this tiny Tahu. I think one person even went and made every Bionicle set in this style. 
It's on YouTube. It's just astoundingly impressive. So yeah, that about does it for me. Hopefully you all enjoyed this review. And thank you so much for watching if you watched the whole thing. Join me next time when I... Well, I'm not going to review another classic set, but I didn't want to break from sponsored videos, so I wanted to do this one because it was very exciting. But there is more exciting content on the way. So join me another time as I look at some other LEGO sets, both sponsored and non-sponsored. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I've been your reviewer host, LJ, and I will see you all another time. Farewell. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I've been your reviewer host, LJ, and I will see you all another time. Farewell. Phew. Done. Gosh. Dang, that took way longer than it should have. All right, well, that's it. Bionicle's finished. Reviewed everything I need to. We're done. I'm really hungry. Get something to eat. Cereal real quick. All right, let's see what I've got. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, that's odd. I didn't know that was in here. <laughs> Should be fine.